Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. It's officially October, and today I'm bringing you a cozy fall edition of what I eat in a day. I've been starting off my mornings with a pumpkin spice latte. I combine a little bit of the non-dairy Starbucks pumpkin spice creamer. I steam those together. I would like to try to make my own homemade pumpkin spice syrup soon, so that might be in an upcoming video. The latte art is still a work in progress. I can't really pour anything other than a heart yet. I'm not the biggest lover of breakfast foods, but I am really wanting to lean into the cozy fall recipes, especially since we moved to the PNW and it is notoriously rainy and cloudy during the fall and winter. And I have struggled with seasonal depression in my past, so I wanna be very mindful of that. And on top of going outside as much as possible and getting regular exercise to improve my mood and supplementing with vitamin D and you know, all of those other best practices practices for mental health. I want to make a conscious effort to lean into the coziness of this season and just have a positive mindset about it. I feel like making really good seasonal food is one of the ways I can do that. All that to explain why I decided to make dessert for breakfast. I made a healthy apple crisp and those needed a while to bake. So in the meantime, I got in a workout. We have two bikes right now because this bike I bought like a year ago and the Bluetooth functionality stopped working randomly. So they sent me a new one for free, which was really cool. I was planning on selling it, but I feel like you like it now. I do, it's nice. Yeah. I just kind of zone out and I don't care about any of the, how many RPMs or mm -hmm. like how many miles I'm going. Yeah, and I'm like one of those people that like, I need to know exactly how far I, I'm going and how fast I'm going. So I've been riding the one that works and Sarah's been riding the one that doesn't work. I've just been setting my timer for half an hour and kind of letting myself zone out while I'm biking. It's super nice to have a form of exercise that I'm not tracking meticulously. And I've actually really been looking forward to it, which is saying a lot because I don't usually enjoy cardio. I was watching an Isabel Page vlog during this bike ride. Her channel always makes me feel super cozy, definitely gets me into the fall slash winter vibes. And I did a little stretch for my cool down, trying to be better about that, especially since we have joined a gym again recently. You just made the coconut whip? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm proud of this. This is too big of a bite, that's okay. We never make anything like this. Like, we never make pie or crumble or crisp. Mm. I like the apples mm -hmm. on the inside so much more than I thought I would. I didn't think I like cooked apples that much, but I really, really do now that I taste it. Good work, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pause to say a few quick words about the sponsor of today's video, Ritual. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know I love Ritual. I've been taking their women's daily multivitamin for the past several years, but recently they came out with a really cool new product called Symbiotic Plus, which is a three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplement. The capsules have a really nice minty flavor, and you just take one a day to help support your gut health, your digestion, and your immune system. And another plus is that they don't require refrigeration. So I personally just keep them right next to my regular Ritual Daily Multivitamin. I take them at the same exact time so I never forget. They also come straight to your door every month with free shipping so you never run out. Something I have always loved about Ritual is how transparent they are about their ingredients and how they're sourced. They are vegan and free of GMOs, gluten, and other major allergens. They're also third-party tested. If you're interested in trying out Ritual, either their Symbiotic Plus or their Multivitamin, or both, they are now offering 20% off your first month. Just visit ritual.com slash sarahsvegan20 and use my code sarahsvegan20 at checkout. I'll have more information linked down below. Lunch was a roasted beet and feta salad, and I had actually prepared all the components for that the day prior. I always used to roast my beets whole wrapped in foil, but I wanted to find a way to do it without throwing away aluminum foil every time. And nowadays I just chop them up. I don't even peel them. The skin doesn't bother me once they're cooked. I toss them with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and I roast them at 375 for anywhere between 45 minutes and 60. 
I love the combination of beetroot and orange or citrus in general. So I made a really simple citrus dressing with some fresh orange juice. Then I minced up some onion. I think red onion or some shallot would be ideal for this, but I just had some white onions. So I just minced those up super fine. Then I added those into a little mason jar along with my fresh orange juice. I added in some apple cider vinegar. You could use any type of vinegar. A little bit of Dijon mustard, some maple syrup. Crushed one clove of garlic. And some extra virgin olive oil. You could add in some fresh herbs or dried herbs if you like. And I love making my dressings in a jar because you can just shake everything up and it gets nice and creamy. I'm obsessed with kale salads all year round, but especially during the fall. I love my hearty harvest salads with you know, roasted vegetables and toasted nuts, a little bit of fruit. And I'm also obsessed with my salad spinner. <laughs> it's one of those things that I put off buying for a long time because I didn't know if I would use it, but I use it to prep all of my salad greens and it really helps you get out every last bit of extra water so your salads aren't soggy and so that your greens stay nice and crisp in the fridge if you have leftovers. If you think you don't like kale and you have not tried massaging it yet, you definitely have to. It makes the kale a lot more tender and easy to digest. And massaging it with some salts and oil and a little bit of something acidic, whether it's vinegar or a little bit of citrus, usually I use lemon juice. But in this case, I just added in some of my orange vinaigrette. Massaging it with those ingredients really cuts the bitterness of the kale. I've also been back to making homemade sourdough bread and I had the end of this loaf I'd made the week prior. Getting a little stale sitting on the counter so I decided to make it into some croutons. Just cube it up, toss it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, I use some Italian herbs, some garlic powder. Then just pop those into my air fryer and I let those crisp up at 350 until they were nice and golden brown. Then I just chopped up a handful of pecans and toasted those on the stovetop. I do think pretty much any kind of nut would be good in this salad. Walnuts, almonds, pistachios, or something like toasted pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. Back to present day, post-workout, took a shower, put on real human clothing, and I'm assembling my salad. I use some of the massaged kale. I also added in some arugula. I love arugula with beets. Then we have our roasted beets, our toasted nuts, little sprinkle of the Follow Your Heart vegan feta crumbles, which I love, and then a handful of my homemade croutons. This beet and feta salad is like my perfect fall salad. I would have loved to add some kind of vegan chicken substitute to this. I just didn't have any. Or maybe like an oven baked tofu to make it a little bit higher protein. Okay, for dinner we have another super cozy, healthy, easy vegan recipe. We are making a butternut squash curry, actually butternut squash and chickpea curry. This recipe is super easy. The hardest and most time consuming part is actually just chopping up your butternut squash. I haven't tried this, but I have heard that with harder squashes, you know, pumpkin, kabocha, acorn squash, you can pop it in the microwave for a minute or two to soften it up before you chop it. But other than that, just, you know, patience and a sharp knife. Then I also just diced up an onion, used my garlic press to crush a bunch of garlic, and minced up some fresh ginger. So these three ingredients, along with our Thai red curry paste, will make a really nice, flavorful, aromatic base for our butternut squash curry. This is my favorite brand of red curry paste. Not all of them are vegan friendly. So double check for fish or shrimp ingredients. You can find this brand at a lot of Asian markets or online. Otherwise, you can usually find the Thai kitchen brand at most like regular grocery stores in the international section. That one I don't like as much, but it will still do the trick. Quite often, I will do all of the chopping and prep work for a dish and then I'll hand it over to Eric and he'll do the actual cooking. 
Let me know if any other couples have this kind of arrangement. But that's what we did for this butternut squash curry. So I'm going to pass the voiceover on to him. Well, this is a different experience. I don't think I've ever done a voiceover for the channel before. I've always loved cooking, but I've never really considered myself someone who could actually cook. I always just thought of myself as somebody who could throw a bunch of stuff together and have it taste pretty good. But now that I'm older, I understand that that's pretty much what cooking is. So I really want to lean into this rediscovery of my love of cooking and kind of inspire anyone watching to do the same because really, what do you have to lose? Dishes like this butternut squash curry are my favorite to make because you can kind of just throw everything into a pot and let time do the work for you. All you have to do is saute your garlic, ginger, and onion until they're nice and soft, throw in your curry paste and a little bit of your coconut milk and let those heat up together. Add in a bouillon cube and some water to form a broth, add in the rest of your coconut milk, your squash, and your chickpeas, and let all of that come to a nice simmer. We also put in a few dried kefir lime leaves, which just have this amazing flavor and smell. Once the squash is soft, we're going to add in our spinach and let that wilt in there, and then we're going to add a big hearty squeeze of fresh lime juice. We're going to serve it up with some fresh jasmine rice, and man, this dinner was so good. I just kept eating it and eating it, and I felt great because everything in it is super nutritious and just makes you feel nice and cozy. For dessert, we had some vegan pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna rewind to a few days prior when I made them. This was actually my second time testing the recipe. This time around, I'm testing the difference between using melted butter and just softened creamed butter in the cookies. While we're on this topic, we need help. So we got this microwave from this nice older lady from Facebook Marketplace, and it works great. It's a nice microwave, but it smells so strongly of this lady's house or her perfume or something, and we cannot get the smell out. We tried a few things. We microwaved a bunch of like white vinegar, and it helped a little bit, but it still smells overwhelmingly like this lady. So if you have any microwave cleaning tips, leave them down below, please. One tip that I'll recommend if you are baking with pumpkin is to squeeze out as much of the extra liquid as possible. I like to use just a nut milk bag for that, but you could use some cheesecloth or even a clean lint-free kitchen towel. And this is just a step that helps to get you really concentrated pumpkin flavor and it improves the texture of the baked goods. I actually did save that extra pumpkin juice to try to make it into something like a pumpkin spice simple syrup. Anyway, I wasn't 100% satisfied with how this particular batch of the pumpkin chocolate chip cookies came out, but I have since tested them one last time, and now the recipe that's on the blog is the one that I'm happy with. So check it out, try the recipe, I'll link it down below. Thank you so much for watching this What I Eat In A Day video. I hope it brought you some cozy vibes and some vegan recipe inspiration as we head into the colder season. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and we'll see you very soon.